And here's our next uh, example with a thermodynamic process. In this case, we're not keeping the pressure the same. We're not going to keep the volume the same. And that's called an isochoric process. Now, isochoric is a term that you're not going to see in many books anymore. That's kind of an old term. They typically like to call it isovolumetric, meaning single volume, volume doesn't change. Now, notice what I wrote up here next to the isobaric process, where the pressure stays the same, that each process has kind of like a unique identifier in something that's special about it. Well, in the case of an isobaric process, the work is always equal to the pressure times the change in the volume. Easy to remember. For an isovolumetric pressure, it's something different. Take a look here on the PV diagram and notice that it's a process where we go from one state of the gas to another state of the gas. Notice that in this case the volume doesn't change. So we can say that V1 equals V2. It's a constant, doesn't change. And the pressure does change from pressure 1 to pressure 2. But notice here, if I asked you to find the area underneath that curve, what would you say it is? And you realize, well, the area underneath a vertical line is simply zero. And since the work done is equal to the area underneath a curve, and since there's no area underneath that curve, work done equals zero. And that's the identifying characteristic of an isovolumetric process or an isochoric process where the work done is equal to zero. Now, that simplifies things when we start calculating the various states of the gas and how much uh, heat is exchanged and how the internal energy of the gas changes. Because if we go back and look at the, the thermodynamic equation of the first law of thermodynamics, we can say that the change in internal energy is equal to the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. But since we know that the work done by the gas is equal to zero, the equation then simplifies to the change in internal energy is equal to the heat added to the gas. So what's happening here is we add heat to the gas, the gas increases internal energy by the exact same quantity, we take heat away from the gas, the internal energy of the gas decreases by the exact same quantity. Now I don't know if you remember what the equation is for the change in internal energy, but if you think back on one of the previous videos, we showed you that the change in internal energy is always equal to N C sub V delta T. And of course, if delta U is equal to that, then Q has to be equal to that as well because they're exactly equal to each other. And so we can see then, then if we write this, so therefore Q is also equal to N C sub V delta T. And notice that C sub V is the heat capacity of the gas when the volume doesn't change and that's exactly what's happening here. The volume doesn't change so it makes sense then that the heat exchange would be equal to N C sub V delta T. So if we now want to find out what the change in internal energy is I simply have to know what the change in the temperature is. If I want to know how much heat is exchanged again I simply need to know what the change in the temperature is. And how would we find that? Well, therefore, we need our second equation, the PV equals NRT equation. So when we take this equation, we can say that T is equal to PV divided by NR. And so in the case of the initial state, that is equal to the initial pressure times initial volume divided by N times R. And of course, you need to know how many moles there are in your sample of gas. But if the initial pressure and volume are known, then you can figure out the initial temperature. If the final pressure and volume are known, you can find the final temperature, which then gives you the change in the temperature, which then allows you to find the change in the internal energy of the gas and allows you to find the heat given off by the gas or added to the gas. All right, that's a nice little introduction. In the next several uh, videos, I'll show you some examples of how to utilize this. As you can see, this is a fairly easy process because one of the three uh, terms in your first law of thermodynamics goes to zero and you simply realize that all of the heat added to the gas simply goes to increase in the internal energy of the gas.